Hey, hey, this is BA, and I want to welcome you to How Forecasting Works. The goal of this video is to kind of take you through um, a little bit of WD GAN's work and then compare that uh, to recent activities so that you kind of understand how and what the mechanics of the forecasts are. Let's get started. Here we have WD GAN Scientific Service uh, letter that was issued November 23rd, 1928. And what it is is the 1929 annual stock market forecast. And uh, this is the 30 industrial stocks here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at and see how uh, this came out. Now, if you notice, there's actually a couple things here I need you to notice. One is it goes high, low, high, low, high, low, high, low, high, low, etc. That sequence at high, low, high is never broken. Okay. There's not, there's not a low to a low here or a high to a high. It's always high, low, high, low. This is where the swings are in the market. What I need you to do is pause this now and write down the dates for January and February. We could have easily used any or all of this, but just for the sake of shortness here in the video, we want to just do January and February. Go ahead and write down those dates. Okay, and we've got the Dow here from 1929. Let's take a look and see how accurate Mr. Gann's forecasts were. January 30, he shows a high. He, I'd say he, uh, I'm sorry, January 2nd, he has a high. He's off by one day. This is January 3rd up at the top. And he's got a, a low between the 5th and the 7th. Well, we got uh, the 8th here. So we have a low on the 8th. Okay. You got January 12th as a high. And the high came in on the 14th. In this next case, he's got a low on the 19th, and the, the technical low came in on the 15th. That's not really the low. That's not where the price cycle pivot was going. It's going right here on the 18th. So he's one day off. Okay. January 24th is a high. And January 25th right here is one, one day off. Uh, January 30th low. He nails it right there. Look at that. G uh, February 4, high. And we got a high on the February 5. His next date is February 8th low. He nails it down here. Nice move there. Sharp, fast. Uh, February 13th and 14th is a high. He's, yeah, February 13th is our high. Okay. Then on our next one, he's got February 28th is a low. And this is February 18th. He's not 10 days off. You see how these bars are here? If you drew a line here and you extend it, in fact, we'll do that. I'll see if we can get this... Uh, going array I think is what it's called let's see if we can get this see how this is extended over here and it actually hits that point okay so your your highs here and your lows here I know this is uh, the low down here but the cycle pivot came in here and there's reasons for that we're not going to get into that just yet okay See, so that's where our cycle pivot is all right now this is from 1929 like I said we could have did the whole thing or part you know other parts or whatever but this kind of gives you uh, an an overview he was 90 percent accurate to within plus or minus one trading day notice i said trading day there he was 90 percent accurate plus or minus one trading day all right so let's look at something a little bit more current this is my uh, forecast that was issued December 18th of 2015, and it's for the Dow Jones, and it covers the month of January 2016. Now, if you, know, if you notice on WD Gans, he does the whole year. 
Whereas I do it every month, and there's a couple of reasons why I do it every month. But I'll tell you something. The work that produces that produced these dates was done in January and February of 2015, which was almost a year prior to this forecast. And once you understand this time cycles, it's just easy to go out one, two, three, four, fifty, sixty plus years and be just as accurate. What I need you to do is go ahead and write down these dates and we're going to take a look at them. Okay. Go ahead and pause it, write them down, and let's go take a look at this. Okay, here we are back again with the uh, Dow Jones, and this is January of uh, 2016. It's not all the way over yet. I think today's the 28th, so there's a little bit more to go, but we, you'll definitely get the picture from it. Um, the first date that I had was January 3rd, which was a high, and what this is Jan this is the bar for January 4. And this is December 31. So it was closed for three days. And like I said, you know, when, when that when that happens, there's um, it's like part of it gets cut off. But we'll go ahead. We'll, we'll just say I was uh, two trading days off and we'll take this uh, December 30th pivot here. Okay. All right. So two days off. And then... The next date I had was January 5 as a low, and the low, the cycle low actually came in January 7th, here. Okay, then I had a high January 11th, and this is the 12th and 13th. We'll take the 12th. Okay, I showed a low January 18th, and it came in January 20th. Okay, and then it goes up to uh, January 25 to 26 is a high, and this high is the 27th. This is the 26th, and that's the 27th. And then I show us going down from there, but unfortunately the market activity hasn't occurred, but we're heading down. Okay, so um, this is the Dow. Okay, it's, yeah, it's it's often a little bit uh, of areas, you know, like two days off and stuff like that. And one of the elements that I want to bring out is you can say, well, why did this stop here instead of the low being here or down here okay well there's mathematical rules that govern this we're not going to get into those but before i leave this video you'll have an understanding of why that occurs okay and how to pinpoint exactly where the cycle pivots are because the cycle pivots aren't always at extreme highs and lows and we saw that with wd gans work and stuff and you could ask you know as a trader like I am, you know, how do you guard against that? Well, the way you guard against that is you bring in additional layers uh, of this. And if you don't have price, see, each one of these points, each one of these high and low pivots has an exact mathematical point that it's going to. And that point is knowable in advance. But And that's called price. But if you don't understand how price works yet, if you just have the time cycles or whatever, you have to bring in other elements. And one of the ways uh, to do that is simply use oscillators, okay? When uh, Use oscillators to trigger when to get in and then let your time periods run out, okay? All right, now a question, uh, one of the questions I get a lot is does the does this work in the forex well let's go take a look you know and uh in an equal uh forecast for recently for the forex this is my forecast issued uh december 18th of 2015 for the aussie i call it the aussie dollar it's australia us dollar currency pair go ahead you know what to do and pause it here Okay, now we come up against that same weekend up in this area, okay? 
December 31st, the markets were closed for three days, and this is January 4th. So even though it happened over a weekend, I was within one trading day of it, okay? So that goes to um, the Aussie dollar. Okay, January 5 low. And this is January 6, January 7th, okay? August, uh, August, uh, January 11 high, the 13th. So let's go ahead and draw these in. Okay, January 5 low. We're going to go down here because that's where the cycle pivoted. And we'll understand more of that in just a minute here okay and then we go up to i have the 11th and that is the 13th okay january 16th is the low this is january 15th one day off there we'll take it January 24th is a high, probably right here, 22nd, 25th, yeah, we got cut off again. I have January 24th as a high, and it goes 22nd, which we're going up to the 22nd, and then uh, the 24th is a weekend, and then 25. So within one trading day, okay, then I had a... Uh, 24th and I had a low January 29th or 31st and that came in on the 28th which I know is a uh, just one day off and let's do that again let's see let's use um, the ray we'll call it and we'll put it on this high here and get it down here and you can see how that bar just sits on there so if I was to draw a line like this it would connect to here and look at this now this is one way there's different when WD GAN talks about support and resistance there's different applications of that but essentially they're the same look at how the price bars respond to these lines what I'm saying is go and restart the video and take a look at these lines and you'll see that price bars will will a lot of times we'll stop on them okay like there was a surge up here that day and it hit the bar and it stopped okay and then it was uh, up here and then it going down here these this is why the price bars were lower price had to move from this pivot to this pivot low and in so doing this it's just a little bit of time and the, the, that space could be traversed in a day well what happens is there's a lot of energy there, so it, it kind of shoots it around until it has to hit this point. I know this is a new concept to most, but this is really the way it works. Okay, if you notice, this bar sits right on the line. This bar sits right on the line. This bar pierces it. Usually, the bar between these pivots, the bar after the pivot and the bar before the pivot will shoot through the lines and there's reasons for that but in most cases not all but in most cases these other these other lines will respond to it now so you can see in i average just below 90 percent accuracy to within plus or minus one trading day, just like WD GAN did in his forecast. Now, what if I told you that in GAN's forecast, that was only the beginning, that was his public issuance? Would I trade my forecasts that I put out? No, absolutely not. And there's shortcuts that are taken to put those out. I don't receive any money from, uh, from them or anything like that. But when I do my own workup as far as trading goes, okay, when I do my own workup, because I trade uh, options on a particular instrument, and when I do that, I do a lot more work. I add in levels of analysis, and these are simple mathematical 
levels of analysis that are not shown here at all. We didn't do any price work. We just talked about time. Because you see, if you don't have time right, or within the area, you know, plus or minus a day, if you don't have that right, you, the price points aren't going to align. It's not going to work for you. And that's what so many people out there are missing. That's the element that so many are out there are missing is you got to get to this point. This is actually step one, getting to the point where you can forecast. That's step one. And Gann put that out, the supply and demand letter. He put he issued that publicly. Was he trading it? Oh, hell no. He had other levels of analysis that would confirm and tone those areas. And I do the same. That's how I know he did too. Very smart man, that WD Gann. Okay. So what you're seeing here is step one. It's step one. Oh, hey, hey, this is BA and have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.